Hey everybody, welcome to Artemis Agile Consulting's YouTube channel. Today we are going to be taking a brief history of Waterfall tour. Sort of, where did Waterfall come from? You know, what was intended uh, when, when the original white paper was published? And then we'll uh, talk a little bit about uh, how the 21st century is impacting Waterfall. Uh, my name is Bill DeVoe, I'm the founder of Artemis. Uh, let's just go ahead and jump right in and get started. Why do we need a history about Waterfall? Well, honestly, I think the answer is that too few people know about what Waterfall is, where it came from. You know, they kind of had this idea of what Waterfall is based upon what they were either taught or what their company's policies and uh, procedures and processes are around software development life cycles. But too few people really know what it was inspired the paper in the first place. You know, why did we get to where we were? So understanding the why is going to help us understand how we're going to improve it if we want to take that path. So the original paper was actually entitled the Managing the Development of Large Software Systems. It was written by uh, Dr. Winston Royce. Uh, he was a director of engineering at TRW, and he had some very specific goals that he was trying to meet. And as he was working with his teams developing software, he began to see that there were some patterns that he wanted to try to uh, improve upon. Uh, and so he published a paper in 1970, it was published in the Proceedings of the IEEE at WestCon, and he gives a description of what this process is. And this is figure two in that, di in that di document. He talks about the waterfall process, although he doesn't actually use the word waterfall anywhere. Um, and that sort of came along later. But in general, we talk about some basic things. Um, right up front, we have requirements. Then we have some analysis. Then design, coding, tests, and operations in that order. Um, and like I said, this is figure two in his paper. So you would figure that the rest of the paper is actually going to talk about this and then go on to explain how all these different operations work and how you do these things. But that wasn't what was actually proposed. Um, this is actually something that Royce felt was not a good idea because immediately after this diagram the next sentence in his paper says I believe in this concept but the implementation described above is risky and invites failure it doesn't really sound like a ringing endorsement of that process and it's because that's not what he was trying to describe he was trying to describe his process for how we should do software development which looks like this. And this is actually his proposal. It's the diagram at the end of his of his paper, figure 10. Um, these are all the different pieces that go into that. And I'm obviously not going to go through this. This is a, a quick hit video. Uh, but you can see this is a lot more involved than just simply going from one state to another, you know, typical stage gate life cycle. So what was he trying to do? Why did he come up with this process? And why did he document the original one? Well, he was working with teams and trying to find a way to deliver projects that were on time, met budget, and met the scope. So really, you know, he's got fixed time, fixed budget, fixed scope, and he's trying to figure out how to make all this work in the majority of the cases. And what he found when he was doing all of his analysis of all the time that they were spending and all the effort that they were investing in their projects was that the highest cost for his coding and test. And so he thought, well, if we can spend more time up front figuring out what to write before we actually write it or writing pieces of it and then going back and, and looking at that seed. Does that proof of concept actually follow? And they'll, they'll just go write the real stuff. If we could do all that stuff and sort of have this better foreknowledge of what we were going to do, then we could reduce our coding and test time. Very standard uh, uh, co cost benefit analysis here. But when you look at computing in 1970, this is what it looked like. We're talking punch cards and mag tape and you know, custom built circuitry. 1970 computing is a very different world than what we have today. So his goal of trying to prevent all that time being spent in coding and tests is because the technology that he was using to implement the software and to test the software was so archaic from our standards that it was very time consuming. It costs a lot of effort and a lot of time to get these things done. So we're in the 21st century. You know, we have a lot of different kinds of tools. How well does this hold up? Well, 
if you look at the original cost benefit proposal, you know, the foundations turn to stand sand. Um, you know, coding and testing today are extremely cheap, like fractions of a penny on $1970. So we can spend a lot more time now iterating in that coding and test cycle. We spend far less money there than Royce's teams did. And if we're spending all of our time up front, we are wasting time because there are, our target is moving as our customers and as our markets and as our competitive landscape changes. The more time we spend up front trying to do an analysis and requirements and design, the less time we actually have for doing the coding and meeting the deliverables that the customers are going to need. So nowadays, we have automation. Nowadays, we have just-in-time design and development that are possible. So we want to deliver value to our customer as quickly as possible. So that's why we're, we, we look at this. So... What does that mean? Sort of was what's next for, for Waterfall or what's next for anything else? So, I mean, his proposal was pretty revolutionary for the time, um, but it actually got co-opted. Um, he was often called the father of Waterfall, but he actively distanced himself from it because that's not what he proposed. Um, you know, I, I think a lot of that probably has to do with the Department of Defense and how they began to adopt large system design and, and the formalities around that. So as large corporate America that was doing software and as the government began doing software, we began to see this formalization of that process and an oversimplification of the process, the one that invites failure, as Roy said. So nowadays what we're looking at, we're looking at things like Agile and we're looking at uh, DevOps and we're looking at other ways in which we can really sort of shrink these cycles down. And whether you're using a process, a methodology, framework, whatever it is, as long as you are trying to build just enough to get something to your customers so that you can get feedback on it quickly and then figure out where to go next, you are doing the right things. And whether you follow the manifesto, which I strongly advise people do, um, or not, you can still get the benefits of it. And Waterfall has its uses. It's just they're, they're not for every project. And we really should be trying to figure out in those cases where we can iterate and those cases where the cost benefit analysis makes a lot of sense for us. We really should be focusing instead on trying to do things in an iterative way, getting cut value to our customers quickly, and then reaping the benefits of them having using the product and giving us information about how we can make the product even better. So I hope you enjoyed this really quick history of the waterfall process and you enjoyed it. Uh, if you'd like to see something specific, let me know. Comment on the video or any of my videos or send me an email and just let me know what kinds of topics you'd like me to cover next. I'm just kind of uh, picking and choosing things that interest me at the day. Uh, if you subscribe, then you're definitely going to stay informed when new videos get posted. And uh, my website, ArtemisAgile.com, I am doing a little more posting up there frequently. I'm trying to get it about once a week now, so uh, check it out. Uh, there's a lot of different topics up there that I'm not covering on the YouTube channel, so uh, feel free to check that out. Thank you very much, and look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.